morning, everyone, and welcome back to Cow's Creations. Well, the thing is now so big, I have to use the uh, the gimbal on it because the stand just won't bring it in focus, all of it. Mind you, the gimbal is struggling as well. I'm all the way back, and you can see it there. So it's mostly finished in the upper torso. The head actually is too small. I printed that one at 175, and it needs to be 200. It is you know, not a huge difference, but it's a difference enough that it's noticeable. Well, to me anyway. I mean, I've, I've got a smaller one, so I can see the difference. Uh, it's all uh, looking really nice. Uh, and this part here printed, uh, I took about a day and a half, two days to print this bit. It's two pieces there and there. I'm sure you can see the uh, line there. Uh, and the doghouse uh, that sits there... I'm thinking about putting uh, like a squig in there, maybe you get like a round base, but instead of having it like sit up and across this, have it all sort of facing out, that way I can just slide the squig in and out with no problems whatsoever. Now this thing is printed in PLA at point two. Um, it's doing really well. I did have a bit of a problem last night. There was a jam in the printer at about one o'clock in the morning. So uh, it'll be repaired this evening, and hopefully we can start printing the correct head. And then we work on the arms. Well, actually, no, I might do the gut buster gun and then do the arms. Let's get it out of the way, make it all nice and complete. Um, once that's done, I'll do more than like the cannon arm, and then I'll do the big mecha claw arm. That said, the mecha claw arm is going to have to be in like three pieces because it's just so huge. So what I'm thinking of doing is maybe doing an alternative one as well. So uh, the mecha one might be there and I might do like a, a chain fist or something or a big chopper or something. I don't know. That way I can interchange them whenever I want just for a bit of variety and to have a lot of fun. Now, uh, a couple of things, uh, mostly about the print itself. Uh, they've got these uh, rather annoying uh, little gaps and they're over the place. There's a thing in Australia called uh, spack filler. Now, spack filler, for want of a better word, is just like a, a very sort of goopy sort of plaster of Paris. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a very small tub of it, and then what I'll do is I'll just get a little bit of my fingertips, and then I'll just rub it over there, and then smooth it all down, and that will take care of those um, lines. Now, back in the day when I was doing lots of cosplaying, what I would do is I would coat something very lightly in the spack filler and then a gentle sanding and then put over the putty primer, which I've talked about before, and it would come up cherry smooth. But with something like this, because it's got some, you know, quite nice details I like, it's not really that much of an option. Plus, the fact is, I don't really have the place to sand here at the moment. If I had my old office workshop shop, yeah, sure, not a problem. I'd sand this thing away like crazy and make it all look pristine and beautiful. Not a problem. But it is what it is. Now, I've spoken about putty primer in the past. Um, so it's this stuff. Uh, and what it does is, it's like a powder that you put on cars when they've got bits of dents and so forth just to fill it up. Now, this stuff you have to shake really well, and I mean really well for a good couple of minutes. It's a powder after all. And then what I would normally do is if it was like, say, a cosplay item, I would spray it on about, I don't know, a foot away, get it coated, then wait for it to dry, and then I would um, uh, smooth it down. You can see uh, the giant back there for Nurgle, he has a coat of it on there. So what would happen then is um, it would just get inside the little grooves because you can hear, you know, these. It gets inside the grooves and it just makes it all flat. So if I was doing the spack filler, it would fill in most of the gaps and the putty primer here would fill in the rest. And then it's just a case of a very, very light sanding, and, you know, with some thousand grit sandpaper. Maybe maybe make it like lightly wet. Don't make it too wet because the powder will come off if it gets too soaked. A very light wet sandpaper and I would sand the entire thing down. Now that said, I can't do that with uh, this humongous monstrosity, mostly because of the space factor. So it is what it is. 
So big is this thing, I've actually had to uh, rearrange the lights and so forth so it actually hits it all because it is just so incredibly massive. I mean, all right, let me get my war boss here for the orcs. Um, you know, that's him down there. So, you know, and he's a huge orc, so he's not uh, the, the uh, war boss, but he's, he's not a bad sized one, you know. He's definitely you know, up there as miniatures go. Yeah, and he's dwarfed by this thing, which you know, really shows off exactly how big this thing is. I will do some measurements later on and tell you exactly how big it is. But without the correct head, it's going to be off by, I would say, two, maybe three centimeters-ish. So you can get a rough estimation. I think I worked it out to be like 64, 65 centimeters um, the other day. My counting was a bit off. I thought this thing was going to be a bit taller. I thought it was going to be another foot taller, I think, in some respects. But, you know, my maths is bad at the best of times. And when you're making something like this, you know, it's um, a little bit guesswork as well. So <clears throat> other things I'm thinking of is uh, this cannon here, putting a little smiley face saying, have a nice day. Or putting just like an, uh, a, you know, four gawk or four mork or something in there as well. Um, apart from that, I'm not too sure. Part of me, and I know it's going to sound weird, wants to somehow remove this and then just have it as like a big plate there. Um, now, I could use some green stuff over there and so forth and make it like that, but I'm not too sure. I might actually just keep it as is in some respects and just play around with it, have some fun. Now, bear with me a second, and just let me remove a few things. Oh, dear. Right, so this head is, like I said, too small. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 it, 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 it's too small, honest, you know. So what I might do is, once I've got a second head and I'm happy with it, I might give this away to free to somebody within my subscribers, just, you know, I'll have a little video and just say, you know, if anybody wants this, type in, you know, Bad Moon or Goss or something like that in the comment section, and I'll pick somebody at random and they can have it. Because realistically speaking, having two of these is not really good. I mean, if it was the correct size, I'd be happy, not a problem, but it isn't. And I'd like to have everything the correct size. So, yeah, look forward to that. I'll be um, giving that away sometime soon. I'll just have, you know, a competition running. A little short one. Um, now, let's see if I can remove this around one-handed. Oh, yeah. Gentle, Mr. Chaos. Gentle. Slow and steady as she goes. Now, the side here, um, I'm not too sure if you can see. I've got some problems with the print there. It's uh, a little bit uh, grainy. That's standard. I mean, I printed it on its side, so that was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't realize it would be that bad. But it is a huge print, so I should have anticipated that. That's not too much of a problem, especially in an orc model. It'll, believe it or not, I can just modify that and make it look like rust, which is fine because I want this thing to be somewhat rusty anyway. Okay. So here we have the back. As we know, we've got the lower levels worked out. I'm going to put an LED light in the back there. Uh, this has a balcony, which I'll print out later on. Um, and what I'll do is then I will have like orcs in here having fist fights and such. And as always, you've got the lines here, the joining lines here and the joining lines here. So they'll need to be taken care of. Uh, apart from that, uh, everything else is going as planned. Well, there you go, there's a little orc war boss in there. Um, I've got some struts that I printed out for um, doing this one-handed, bear with me guys. I've got these struts that I was going to print for the uh, um, stage, and I was thinking about maybe, you know, making, resizing these and putting them in there and then putting a piece of board across like that. That way it looks a bit more authentic than me just putting a bit of plastic card in there or something. It will actually look like a bit of, you know, in, in, internal structure. That way we can, you know, have, well, that's a bit of one. That was a bit more of a bit of base on it. So put that on there and then have, you know, one going across and such. 
So that'll be more than likely it. And then I'll put some cogs and gears in there and some LED lights at the very back so people can, you know, have a good look. Um, apart from that, there's not much more I can really do at the moment until the printer is fixed. Um, I don't want to paint it. I do not want to even put um, fillers on it or anything until once it's all done. And I know that sounds a bit strange and it, it's more of like in my autism going on there, but it's just how I want to work it. So what will happen is once the head is done, I'll then do the belly and then do the arms. Then I will start doing all the interior workings. Once that's all done and I have everything and I have a plan, then we go ahead and we start uh, filling in gaps and you'll start seeing it being painted up and so forth. That said, I mean, I have been looking at a lot of painting videos for gargants and uh, stompers and so forth. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing for you know something this size, but it all works in the same principle, I guess. So uh, it'll have some bad moon, goths, uh, snake bites, blood axes, and so forth in there. Plus the fact I am just, I'm just going to go, um, there was a TV show I saw recently, uh, Archer. And there's a guy in there and he goes, I want you to go crazy. I want you to go, I want you to go really out there. I want you to do some really crazy, weird stuff. I want you to really let your imagination go. And that's what I'll be doing with this. I will be just, you know, thinking, well, it doesn't have enough purple on there. And this is a stealthy gargant. So, you know, I might put a bit of extra purple on there or something. Um, or, you know, I might say, well, there's not enough blue in there. You know, why, why don't we have enough blue? And go from there. Now, uh, we have these little things here. Um, I'm guessing they were supposed to be gun turrets or something. Uh... I might put guns in them. I might not. I don't know. Apart from that, it, you know, it's got enough gun ideas on it anyway. And it's supposed to have, you know, the two massive arms with, you know, a hand weapon and a humongous cannon. The cannon itself is going to take the entire plate of the bed plate for the, guy, for the um, printer just to print the gun. So, you know, the gun is going to be huge. And in some respects, I, I might want to put a little, a little um, Gretchen in there with a broom sweeping it out or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't want this thing to look like it's in battle per se. But, you know, all the little Gretchen and Orcs and so forth will all be removable. Because if I, if I ever take this to a, a tournament or something, uh, it's nice to set up. It's nice to show off the fact, hey, I've made this Gargant. But... The chances of using it in an actual game are pretty small. I mean, I mean unless, of course, I go against uh, some Titans or something and have a Titan battle, then, sure, not a problem. But please help me out with some rules, guys, because, you know, I, I have no idea for 10th edition, none whatsoever. I could really do with some help. Okay, um, apart from that, it is what it is at the moment. Once the printer's fixed, head, buck, gut buster, and then the arms. There is uh, some modifications I will be doing, but once again, I'll wait until it's all done and go from there. If you have any questions, just ask. Uh, please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. And stay tuned for uh, the head that will be uh, given away for free shortly. All right, everyone have a great day. This is Chaos signing off. Love the game, love life. Chaos out.